It is time to discuss Attack on Titan Season 2. I have watched Season 2 of the anime and read the corresponding uh, volumes, which is 9 through 12, I think. So as a refresher, the way I've been handling talking about Attack on Titan up to this point is I'm posting two videos per season. So that's this video, which I, after I've completed this section of the story, I go back and look at it as a whole and discuss with you about uh, big plot points, characters, uh, themes, and just kind of look at the section as a standard normal review. But then tomorrow, as a bonus video, I will post a vlog video. After each volume, I come in and just kind of exhaustively discuss that volume, talk about different scenes or clues, different character moments that were meaningful to me, and kind of just in the moment hash out uh, my thoughts and theories and reactions to what's currently happening in the story. And then after I complete another volume, I come back and do another check-in. Um, so those, those videos are long, but if you are into, you know, theories, observations, finer details, incoherent rambling, um, do check that one out tomorrow. And if not, no worries, because we have this video. So season two starts off with the aftermath of the massive Titan fight that destroyed the city and the capture of their friend and comrade, Annie. And on top of that, they discovered that there are more Titans hidden in the walls and more Titans are coming within the walls. So they assume that wall Rose has been breached. And at the very beginning of the season, we also meet a whole new type of Titan, one that's 17 meters tall or more, covered in hair, and that seems incredibly intelligent. So just in this beginning little chunk, the first like two chapters of this section of the story, we expand how great the Titan threat and interaction within the story really is, that we don't have a handle on things even as much as we thought we did, which was already kind of tenuous. And we're introduced to a whole different type of Titan, one that can speak more coherently, one that seems incredibly intelligent and is even questioning, am I not using the right language? I'm pretty sure this is correct. And also one that seems, I think, quite old because he doesn't recognize the, I think it's called ODM gear, observes, oh, you're using swords. You must know about our weakness. You must know that we're hidden behind the neck. And then when he takes the ODM gear, he walks away and goes, huh, humans come up with such interesting inventions. So seems like this is a Titan that is extremely old. But he also commands the other Titans, tells them stop fighting or stop attacking this human. When one doesn't obey, he just by force makes it stop. Um, so this, how involved the Titans are in the world and also how extensive, how far out the Titans go um, beyond what we've been able to observe up to this point, everything is just broadened right here at the beginning. And so right from the start of season two, after we've been in introduced to who the Titans are, what kind of threat they pose on, the, on humanity, and the fact that we do have traitors in our midst, being Annie, now we immediately broaden all of it to the point that everything feels so much more massive. The Titan threat feels so much more massive, not just in size and in strength, but in scope. While we're talking about the Titans, we also got a huge reveal in this season that is confirmation that the Titans are all human, or at the very least, the remnants of what were once human. When Connie goes back to visit his hometown alongside Rainer and Bertolt, and they observe that not only is there no sign of struggle, no blood, no bodies, but there's a giant Titan on top of a house that can't move. And, and that Titan tells Connie, welcome home. <laughs> this Titan is all but confirmed to be Connie's mom. And very shortly after this, we confirm that Walrose was not compromised. So at least at this point in the story, it seems to me that what's been told through this is that someone actually came inside the wall or already lives inside the wall and came into this village and injected or whatever means is used to create this type of Titan. We know that Eren was injected and I'm pretty sure Ymir was as well. But however these Titans are created, someone came into this village and created these Titans of the villagers, from the villagers. So I already suspected in season one that all Titans, not just the ones that can shift back and forth, are human in some way because of the side story we got where the one Titan bowed uh, to a cadet that it met in the forest and said, Ymir, or Ymir, well met. 
and seemed to recognize her, seemed to want to communicate with her, but was also really tortured and uh, freaked out. I talked about it all in the last videos, uh, I think just in the vlog. Anyway, that Titan seemed to hold memories of another person that it once knew and seemed to want to communicate and feel conflicted between its natural uh, Titan urges versus communication and some sort of um, respect towards the person that it ultimately killed. So already we had this massive hint that this Titan was once human or is somehow connected to uh, this person. Now, naturally, when I met Ymir in season two and she turned out to be Titan, then I thought, okay, well, maybe, maybe not. But this hometown visit with Connie seems to indicate exactly that that these titans are made of humans or the remnants of what once were human. Anyway, we learned tons about the titans in this season and it was all so fascinating to me. I really think that they were built up a lot, even more than what I've discussed just here. But another thing that it really did was it built up its characters in this season so well. In season one, we already knew the main three, but in season two, we get a powerful scene where Sasha's father reiterates what I believe to be some of the main themes in this story so far, that mankind is meant to lean on one another and not be every man for themselves, that we need each other to survive, that the world is connected. Then we watch alongside Sasha as she learns that lesson in real time, witnessing what happens when humanity doesn't take care of and protect each other as a child is subjected to watching her mother be eaten alive because people left them behind because of the mother's bad leg. But Sasha gets the child away and even pushes her ahead so that she can stay back and fight, making herself completely vulnerable so that she doesn't miss the shot. When her father told her that she had become a fine woman, I cried. The cyclical nature of this lesson being told to her by her father and then her learning it in experience and then for her father to recognize and acknowledge that growth in her. What a beautiful way to tangle characterization and theme exploration in just a single chapter. This season also got me extremely attached to two characters that I didn't previously care about, Reiner and Bertolt. I think the scene, no, I know, the scene that won me over to Reiner was when uh, the they were in the tower, they were in the castle, and the Titans were infiltrating the castle and coming up the stairs, and Reiner uh, blocked the door, he saved Connie, got bit by a Titan, and then just, without thought, picked it up on his shoulders, carried it up the stairs, and was gonna launch himself out the window to protect everyone. And after, very shortly after that, I learned that Reiner was a Titan. I was like, oh, so I guess he was gonna throw himself out the window and turn Titan. But no, he was just in soldier mode instead of in warrior mode, and he thought this was what he was supposed to do. We'll talk about that split in a little bit. But Reiner, his sacrifice and his, I just, I'm, I'm a sucker for characters that show sacrifice and loyalty to other characters. So Reiner doing that got me really attached to him. And then I automatically got attached to Bertolt too, because they're from the same hometown. They're always together. They're always looking out for each other. Bertolt, Bertolt also saved Reiner during that whole exchange. But then also later on learning more about, you know, their Titans and all the conflict going on there, recognizing that all throughout this season, even back in the castle, Bertolt has been reminding Reiner, no, he used to be a warrior. He's a soldier now, but he used to be a warrior. And like how that would kind of almost like snap Reiner back into remembering the duality that he's living. And then over and over again, he keeps calling Reiner a, a warrior. And so I'm watching this guy try to look out for his friend in the most quiet and gentle way possible, reminding him like not to lose himself in this false identity that he's taking on. It did a really good job of deepening these characters, even though it's very complicated because, you know, they're killing people, eating them, destroying them. Um, that's not so great, but it did a really good job of deepening their characters uh, as far as like exploring them and making them more fleshed out characters when previously I didn't care about them at all. More excellent character exploration was in Krista and Ymir. Krista, who wants so badly to be known as someone who would sacrifice for others, and Ymir, who's lived her life saying that she'll live for herself, but continues to choose to sacrifice herself for others. When she was a child and pretending to be the king's daughter, she sacrificed herself for them. For Krista, she sacrifices herself over and over. And even in the end, for Reiner and Bertolt, again, she sacrifices herself despite saying she wants to live for herself. She just 
doesn't. We have Krista, whose identity has been hidden, and Ymir, who, as far as I can tell, has taken her identity into her own hands and wants so badly for Krista to hold on to what's hers, starting with her name. We see them as two people from a similar but different background and similar but different struggle, who see the reasons the other one would be rejected by everyone else, yet they accept each other completely. And the connection between Reiner Berthold and Ymir and the experience they had five years ago and how they have to work through that as well. It's just brilliant. I should also mention the Wallace here because they were a part, a significant part of uh, this section of the story in that they know the secret behind the Titans behind the walls and, or in the walls and uh, they won't surrender that information but they lead us to the mystery around Krista and the fact that she's the secret keeper. On all of that I don't have a ton to talk about just yet because I feel that there's still a lot of information yet to be had. Uh, the fact that the Titans were used to build the walls that have been protecting humanity and the fact that there are Titan, it seems to be Titans that have complex and mixed motivations. I feel like there's something that's going to be built on the rationale for the Wallace not giving the information that they have, but I just need to see how certain things play out before I can really analyze it or discuss it very much. What I will say though is I do wonder if what the story is doing with the Wallace is displaying uh, or further fleshing out the theme that Sasha's father reinforced in the season that was established in season one, which is that we need each other in order to survive. We have to band together. We can't be, um, we can't isolate ourselves and become so individualistic that we abandon one another. And then we have the Wallace who have answers and are withholding it. And then, and then the, we're shown what that's doing. It's displacing people. It's causing people all this harm. And shouldn't you want to tell us so that we can do something? So I do think that there's more layers to be uncovered on this. I, th I do think that there's more information that I need before I can really, pa before I can really judge exactly what's going on here. But that's just one observation that it might be doing. But last season we realized that there was a traitor among us and even that that traitor was a friend we realize not only that Aaron can shift, but there are others that can shift too, and they're working from the inside. It created an anxiety and a sense of instability within our own ranks that we should be trusting. Annie was our main person that introduced that threat and that we had to confront head on in season one. In season two, now we have unveiling after unveiling to show us how wide this threat is and how entrenched the Titans have become in our ranks. The reveal of Ymir was extraordinary with how abrupt and quick it was and how her first act as an on-page Titan, at least for us, was to defend, well, primarily Krista, but you know, everyone. And then Reiner and Bertolt, how quiet it was. Not even in the foreground, totally in the background, totally quiet, as seemingly as an aside. Reiner just tells Aaron, I'm the armored one, he's the colossal, you're coming with us. Like, we were gonna destroy humanity, that was the goal, but now that we have you, we don't have to do that. So, come on. <laughs> to which I'm like, okay. So, I don't know why capturing Aaron would mean that they don't have to destroy humanity anymore. I assume it's because Aaron's the control. Not capturing, destroying humanity. I assume it's because Aaron's the control. So maybe, I don't know, maybe controlling the Titans isn't as easy as it appears to us. The Beast didn't seem to be able to totally control the Titans at the beginning of this season. And, you know, the one Titan continued gnawing on the human. And so the Beast had to like pick him up and squeeze him in order to get him to stop. So I don't know, maybe, maybe the Titans aren't really being controlled on the level that someone, whoever is leading all this, wants them to be, and that's why they want Aaron. I assumed they wanted Aaron because he was Dr. Yeager's son, but I mean, I, I don't know, the control thing might be the reason why. Anyway, the reveals were each so unexpected, and I did suspect Rainer and Bertold for a second, and then conned myself out of it because I just really liked their characters. But it was an excellent progression from this is the threat, now we have to address it in season one, to 
much like with the Titans themselves, expanding and broadening what the threat of the Titans is, also within our ranks, expanding and broadening how entrenched they actually are. After that reveal with Reiner and Bertolt, the fight was so good. It was such a human fight. It wasn't punching and hitting and roaring like a monster. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was close quarter. It was mixed martial arts. It was tumbling around on the ground like humans that have a personal grudge, or at least Aaron does. The fight felt desperate and personal, and that continued after Aaron and Ymir were captured. When Aaron continued to attack, despite not being able to shift, and it continued in conversation, where Aaron was just shocked <laughs> that Bertolt had listened to him talk about his mom being trapped under the house. And that happened because of Bertolt, because Bertolt kicked the gate on the house. This whole section from the fight at the base of the wall to the discussions up in the trees, it all just felt so totally human, even though it was done amongst a bunch of people who are shifting back and forth between human and titan. But it also put a big focus on the emotional side of this conflict. Ymir's conflict of self-preservation versus looking out for others. Reiner's mental split as he takes on two roles. The role that he has as a titan and as a warrior, and the role that he has taken on and seemingly become attached to as a soldier. And Bertolt's agony over the weight of what they've done to humanity, as well as feeling like they must continue to do it. And then the pleading of the cadets, trying to connect with their friend's humanity and reeling that someone that they thought they knew would commit such atrocities. I will say that my one big complaint about this season is that while I think that the character work in the season was so much stronger than season one, it does take away somewhat of the impact, the fact that the characters were built up in this very short season and then revealed as titans in the very same season. And I realize that this is potentially an unfair ask because season one was already twice as long as season two. So it seems unfair of me to say, why can't we have established these characters better in season one? That way the impact of them being revealed as titans doesn't feel so short. It doesn't feel like they're introduced, they're established, they're revealed all in one fell swoop. Uh, it would have been nice to have more buildup. I mean, I, I do feel that it would have been nice to have more buildup. It would have been nice if some of the things that they're hearkening back to, um, like the way that Bertolt slept, I think it was him, or maybe it was Reiner that slept like that, the way that they would sleep or the way that they acted or the bonding that they did, it would be, I would love to have established those things in season one so that I could have felt an even stronger connection to them before I felt completely betrayed by them. <laughs> so that is my complaint, but I also, say that complaint with the knowledge that it's not entirely fair because season one was already doing so much work at establishing the world and the characters and the conflict that deepening them in season two makes sense, but deepening them only to then have the betray immediately after, it just felt a little bit too condensed. But I don't know what the resolution to that is. So I, it's not, that, it's not that big of a deal. Also, I am in a place of unsure on how I need to feel about certain elements, like of, of the Titans um, that were in, within our ranks, the ones that were established and then revealed in this season, because they've committed atrocities. I mean, it's horrible. Like humanity is in such a desolate and desperate and horrible state because of the work of the Titans. But <laughs> characters like Reiner and Bertolt and Annie probably too, were termed Titan a while ago, right? Like probably around 10, 11, 12, right around that age range which doesn't excuse any of their actions at all, but a child who has been, I don't know if they chose this life, it seems like Ymir might've done, I don't know if they chose this life or if they were forced into it, and that does matter. I'll need to know that information before I make any sort of judgment on anything, but if they weren't, if they didn't choose this life for themselves, then a child who was forced into becoming a child so soldier, who was forced into becoming a weapon of war, does add a lot of nuance to their situation, as well as explains why they're so conflicted and so hurting over what they've done to the people that they care about. So it seems like there's a lot of nuance here and there's definitely a lot more to be re revealed. I obviously need to understand 
why the Titans are doing this and what the ultimate goal is and how these children got involved in being used as weapons of war. Like, there's a lot that I still need to understand, so I can't actually make any sort of assessment on it at this point, but I will say that it's been very intriguing to try to piece together and peel back the layers on. But even with a strong emphasis in this season on those that betrayed us and their inner struggle, there was also still care given to those who fight for the safety and survival of humanity. The people on the tower who fought and bantered and ultimately sacrificed their lives trying to protect the rest from the Titans. Mikasa and the other cadets who would not stop fighting, even if there was no appealing to the Titans' humanity. And one of the best scenes of the season was Erwin, who led the charge, continued to lead it even as he's being dragged away by a Titan, and still cut Eren free after his arm was ripped off. Oh, so good! And Hans getting to once again face the Titan that he couldn't face that day, and trying to protect those kids all over again, and Eren being thrown back to that day again as well, and how hopeless and weak he feels in the face of their greatest threat. The series continues to balance the mystery, the emotions, and the feeling of desperate survival in impossible odds. Season two, at least for me, the way I, I mean, this is my first watch through, slash read through, season two for me was a season of aftermath. After we revealed the wider threat that the Titans pose in season one, then we get reveal after reveal of traitor after traitor. We get to see the conflict that they experience as well as the resilience and fight of humanity in the midst of impossible odds and desperate bid for survival, and an emphasis on their need to come together and rely on one another in order to survive. With all of that, season two leaves me with way more questions than season one did. <laughs> I don't feel like I, I definitely had certain things expanded on, but I'm not sure how many answers I got in this season, and I'm left with many, many more questions. Uh, while I loved how much season two focused on the deepening of the Titans, of the lore, of the characters, uh, and of the, the the scope of our threat. It still feels more like a bridge season to me, and because of that, at least on my first watch through season one, I do like it a little bit more. But this video goes up on a Friday, and so today, the day that this video goes up, I'm, I'm going straight into season three because I just can't wait. If you are a mega fan of the series and this video wasn't enough, if you want to dig into all the smaller details, all the theorizing, all the things that weren't mentioned in this video, uh, do feel free to check out the vlog that will be posted tomorrow. Even though the season is half as long, that vlog will probably be the same length as the first one. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it, but it's where we are. So, Please do chat with me more in the comments about the series if you would like to. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did you like season one as much as season... Do you like season two as much as season one? I'll see you again soon. Bye.